Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Fresh Off the Set. I'm Alora Murray. And I'm Kami Stroop. So today we are talking about a unique perspective on fixing and healing relationships. Yes, we are. So Carrie spoke to Dr. Ziba Graham. Um, he's a certified couples counselor. He's going to share how you can heal your marriage without couples counseling. So let's take a listen. I am really excited to talk to today's guest, Ziba Graham Jr. Thank you for joining me. Well, it's certainly good to be here. Good to talk with you. Oh, I'm excited to dive into this. Okay, let's just start with your book, Fix Your Marriage Without Counseling, is all about moving beyond like traditional therapy methods. Can you share what first motivated you to like rethink the typical counseling approach for couples? Sure. When I first started, after I went to school and uh, you know started counseling, I just started in you know, people would come in and the first thing I'd say, well, what seems to be the trouble or what's your problem? And uh, that was a kind of a mistake because a lot of times the conversation never even got past that because nobody could agree with that, Mm. you know, with what the problem is. And then I was, uh, you know, this is uh, kind of the scientific method that everybody would go to where they would be concerned with the facts and go go back to the past, review all the past, break the problem down to parts, and look for weaknesses, try to get the right answer. And, you know, any answers I had for them, they didn't agree with me, or I sounded too much like mom, and so that <laughs> didn't seem to work. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, you know, you can always find a solution to somebody else's problem, but it's kind of hard to find, you know, your own. So I just I just got real frustrated and trying to find the problem that never seemed to find. And then the couples would just disintegrate right before my eyes and start arguing and back and forth and everything, you know, from your family raised you. And it just got, it just just didn't work. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So. Well, in, in the early days of your career as a licensed marriage and family therapist, you noticed that sometimes it wasn't very encouraging because of the focus on the problems and the blame. So what was that like light bulb moment that made you realize, you know, something needed to change in, in your methods? Well, one of the things was I was very unhappy because I had to hear all this bad stuff that was going on. A couple would come in, you know, a professional couple that But, you know, was doing real well, you know, uh, economically wise. And all of a sudden they would just, you know, uh, turn into just arguing. And it was so depressing for me. And I really didn't want to hear just all of these stories over and over and how bad it was. And, And so I got I just got depressed. And I even talked to my superior about I don't think this is cut out for me. So that's kind of what what made me turn around and try to find a little better future for my counseling experience. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty heavy to have everyone just, Uh oh yeah, you know, (laughs) and you're trying to carry all their problems and figure it out. Well, and one of the key strategies in your book is helping couples focus on the future instead of the past. Why do you think shifting the focus from past grievances to future possibilities? is so powerful in improving relationships? Well, when you paint a picture of the future without conflicts, it it brings hope back. And all couples have had times when they were relatively conflict-free, so they can have a vision of how it would be because they've been there before. I mean, you know, when they first got married, things were just doing fine, and, and then, you know, other things happen. But in focusing on the future gives them hope that maybe we can get, you know, have a little, get some uh, better relationships back. So this is one reason. The other thing is men really focus on the future. Women tend to focus on the past. And so it kind of brought men into the conversation. Mm, Okay. And you talk about how your method can resolve conflicts in just three to four guided conversations? That's that's a big claim. Can you walk us through maybe what, <laughs> what one of those guided conversations look like? I sure can. And I've, I've kind of, over all oh, 15, 20 years, I, I kind of got this down pat now. Yeah, you have the experience. I, <laughs> yeah. 
the first thing I would do is go to scaling questions. And the scaling questions are just like they all ask you at the hospital, how bad your pain. Mm. So I would ask the couple, both couples, I would ask both people, where are you right now on a scale of one to 10? One is the worst your marriage can be. 10 is the best. Well, if they come to counseling, they were usually around a three or a four. Wow. And, and so then I would say, where would you like to be? Or where have you been? And they say, oh, when we were first married, I was like a nine, you know. But then, you know, I've been to a seven, seven and a half, you know. And so that then you find out where they want to be. So they say, I want to go from here where I am to at least a seven. And I never said, well, you only have to go up four points, but that's what they were thinking. And all of a sudden now, four points seems like, well, maybe we can do this. Mm -hmm. And then other questions, how willing are you to do your part to help it go up? What can your partner do to help you go up a half a point or a whole point or a quarter of a point? And they would say, well, he would do this. He would clean up after himself. You know, in the evening after I go to bed and then I don't come down in the morning, there are three empty beer cans and <laughs> popcorn all over the floor, okay? I'd go up a half a point if he did that, okay? So then I would ask, I would ask as many things as I could and how much they would go up. Okay, so then, goodbye, see you next week. Then the first question next week, what's better? Oh, well, we fought all the way over it. Yeah, but what's better? Well, the fight wasn't too bad, you know, not a bad one. And then I would ask him the miracle question. The miracle question is if a miracle happened and all of a sudden your life was just a whole miracle and you were like a 10, what would be different? And then have him tell me about the miracle question. And then I would say, have any of these things that you described in your miracle ever happened? And they go, oh, yeah, yeah, we, oh, yeah, well, a lot of it used to be, a lot of that stuff we used to do. Okay, then they think about that. And the section three, what's better? And that, every time I would have them repeat the scale. So a lot of times they start as a four, maybe then they go a four and a half, maybe a five. Then all of a sudden they would be going up a little bit, and she would say, he's really trying. Well, that was a big that was a big deal when he starts trying. <laughs> so then, and number four, the fourth time I saw him, I would say, if suddenly your spouse turned into the perfect spouse, just imagine that. How would you change? Oh, how would I change? Oh, I guess I'd have to be the perfect spouse too, okay? So they start thinking about these ways that they can help each other. And then what would your marriage look like sound like when it's the best it can be. What would it look like? Well, the grass would be mowed and the house would be painted and the leak and the roof would be fixed and the garage would be cleaned up and we would have meatloaf. Can't imagine how many times guys would say, <laughs> oh, I know things were getting better. We wouldn't be fast food. We'd have a meatloaf. <laughs> so, and what would it sound like when it's the best? Well, what it would sound like is when I got home, the house would be quiet, no TV on, the kids would be doing their homework, getting ready for school the next day. So all of a sudden now they're visualizing how they want it to be. And then I'd say, well, let's see, I'll see you in a week. And they go, no, I think we're okay now. Oh. Okay. So that's kind of how it went. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> that is interesting to switch your mind frame. I mean, I'm just thinking in my own marriage on what you can uh, improve on and think of the good, focus on the good and, and to picture it on a scale that gives somebody like a visual. I think that's, I think yeah. that w would work really well. Yeah. Guys love that because now he's got a goal see, to help her move up one or two points. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Well, in communication, is at the heart of your approach and you provide practical tips on how to avoid like laying blame and nagging. What advice would you give to someone who struggles with breaking those habits in their own relationships? Well, uh, now here's my rule is never lay blame. Okay. So you got to think positively. And if you never lay blame, then the corollary to that is everybody always tries their best. Now, sometimes the best is not good enough, so you just need to help them. But you have to kind of give them credit for trying. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, men are quick to change when their relationship is in danger. So it's very important that they know exactly where their marriage is and where they where they stand. Uh, you know, so many times, like his wife would say, well, I'm not happy. Well, he thinks he's not happy because she didn't get invited to the party down the, down the street. Mm-hmm. But really, she's not happy with him. But boy, when she says I'm a three or a four, that's really important. So now we're talking about change and and one person gives the other person hints to how I can move up. And so the blame game, you don't even go there because that's endless. No one wins. So you just take <laughs> take them to the future and do the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's good, Zyba. Okay, and as the therapist who has guided, I mean, you've guided count, countless couples. What are some of the common mistakes people make when they're trying to fix their marriage like on their own? And how can we avoid those pitfalls? Maybe just give us a couple examples. Yeah, okay. Well, the thing is, it's always counterproductive to try to identify the problem or the conflict. And and then it just causes a major split. And that's kind of, you know, going the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. So then their marriage is a problem. Then they are the problem. And then the only way to get out of this problem is, you know, a split or something like that. So I never, I never, uh, uh, you never want to talk about the problem because you can never find the answer. Mm, That's a really good point. I like that advice. And you've mentioned, you've mentioned that fix your marriage without counseling your book is especially practical for men. What about Uh your approach resonates with men and how have you tailored it to appeal to them? Okay. So with men, uh, Men really appreciate this method. It minimizes talking. For men, talking increases stress. Uh, this method also enables men to stay in their left brain where they're more comfortable. Okay. You know, it's not talking about feelings or anything. It's action-oriented. Men try to get their spouse up a few points. It works fast, so men can re- see the results quickly. Goes to the future which is more comfortable in the past for men, Mm -hmm. talks about facts, and it helps men focus on just two or three things that they can do to help their spouse. And they also know where they stand in the relationship, and that's really important. Because men want to be her hero, and if he helps her go up two or three points, he feels good about that. That, that's a, that's good. And then the results, I mean, result driven, if you're a result driven person, it's like, okay, let's, let's get to the bottom of this and let's get results. Ultimately what we all want. Right. Yes. Right. Exactly. Okay. And Zyba, after retiring from counseling, you've written, you've written multiple books and articles. How does writing about relationships compare to being in the room with a couple going through therapy? Well, one of the, one of the things, the biggest difference is that, I've always felt that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. In counseling, the student is ready. So they're ready to work on the relationship. When writing about relationships, often the student isn't ready. Mm. Ideally, it's better to get ready before you really need help. So uh, it's a little bit different because when I write or give presentations, a lot of times, a lot of things kind of go over their head, but I think it's real important to get a book before you need it and then to just kind of know, you know, kind of how it's going so that you just can kind of catch it, you know, early. I think that's important. Sure, sure. Okay, and lastly, what do you hope couples will take away from your book and your methods that could change the way they approach challenges and their own marriages, like, for the long term? Okay, the main takeaway, I think, Get the book, read it, put it on the shelf. You will need it later. And so will your kids and friends and neighbors. Many couple, they have told me that they get this book and they just keep it handy, use it periodically. Also, when another person says, Bob and I are having troubles, just loan them the book before you hear more than you want to. So what I've found is that what this book does is it helps to uh, minimize conflicts. And a lot of times as a child, you don't know how to resolve conflicts because maybe your parents divorced or they solved 
their conflicts quietly out on a walk. So everybody needs to learn all over again how to resolve conflicts, and that's what I hope them help them do. That's so good. You know, I love I love this conversation, Zaiba, because you know we're fo- <laughs> I really I mean we're focusing on building on the good, you know, and these are our our relationships in our lives with the people that matter most to us, the people that we love the most. So it's important to, you know, do whatever we can to strengthen those relationships. You've given really great advice. Um, Zyba, where can we find your book and follow more about you? Oh, my book, uh, Fix Your Marriage Without Counseling, a practical method men will appreciate, is on Amazon. Uh, You can get it at your favorite bookstore if you just ask them the They'll get you a copy. You can get it at Walmart dot uh, com, but it's available in all those places. Okay, all right, Zyba, thank you so much for joining me today on Fresh Off the Set. Um, it's been a pleasure talking with you, and we've gotten lots of great advice for our relationships. Zyba, thank you so much. Oh, you're quite welcome. Good to chat. And thank you for listening to another episode of Fresh Off the Set. Please rate, review, and subscribe, and we will see you next week. Congrats, you made it to the end. If you want to continue to freshen up your day, you can watch us on Fresh Living every weekday on CBS Channel 2 in Utah at 1 o'clock. You can also watch us on our YouTube channel, KUTV Fresh Living, and follow us on social media. We will see you next week.